Hello everyone, this is Chad from Good Creative Tutorial. Today I want to go over the shape tools in Photoshop. So go ahead and open up an image or if you just go to File New and use some kind of preset like uh, you can use Web, uh, you can use Web 1280 by 800 just so that you have some area to work with. And the shape tools uh, work in three different modes. We can create shapes that are just consisting of pixels, uh, ones that are consisting of paths and shapes consisting of shape which is the default, the top option. So you'll notice when you select the shape tool, if you just press U on the keyboard uh, or just click, the default one should be rectangle. If you click and hold on the rectangle tool it'll bring out this side menu. So go ahead and select the rectangle tool and you'll see up on the options bar uh, a couple more options. So shape obviously uh, it's going to create a new layer as long as we have this option here, new layer. Uh, if you do path, you'll just create paths. I went over a little bit of that in the uh, pen tool tutorial, uh, but we can talk about it a little bit here. And then pixels are, it's just going to create pixels on the layer that you're on currently. It's not going to necessarily create a new layer. Uh, in fact, it won't create a new layer. You have to create a new layer first if you want it on a new layer. So with the shape selected, if you go over to the right a little bit, you'll see fill here. We, you can create fill, uh, custom one. So if you just Go ahead and click and drag out, and you'll notice it creates a new uh, shape layer on the Layers panel. It has some options over here. Uh, some of the, these are repeated up on the Options bar as well. We have Properties, and then you can change it over here as well. So if you click the blue here and change it to another color, uh, it does apply it not just to the next shape that we draw, but the current shape that we just uh, drew out and is still live and selected there. Uh, you can of course do some gradients, all right, different angles of gradients. Uh, you can do patterns, fill it with different patterns, and you can click here and maybe load in patterns that you download. Uh, so there's many different options there for the fill. Uh, if you go to the stroke, same kind of thing. You can add a stroke that's a gradient, a solid color. You can create how uh, thick it is. You can also make it a pattern, of course. Uh, Let's make this a little bit thicker. You can see it changes it over here. You can change the style up here. So if you have dotted, uh, dashed, and you can customize down here, you know, the caps, whether they have a rounded cap, uh, just the caps just end right along. It's aligned with the edge of the line. Uh, or if it goes out a little bit or if it's rounded, same thing with the corners. Uh, and you can align is basically our kind of not really a path because we have it on a shape, but uh, wherever we drew out here, you see these lines that are just showing that we have the shape selected. It's going to be in the middle if we have that selected. If we do this one, it's going to put the border or the stroke on the inside. If we do the bottom one, it puts a stroke on the outside. All right, so that's what that align is. You can click more options. There's a couple more things here. Uh, you can do, if you do dash line, you can customize the dash and the gap in between, like if you did dash six, gap four, you know, it'll have a regular pattern there with the dash. All right, I'm just hit cancel. Uh, so once you draw it out, you'll see these numbers over here and they are linked. Uh, the proportions are constrained here. So if I change this, let's just change this to say 400 and hit enter. Uh, it didn't change the height there. And if I click it, now they are linked. So now if I change it, let's just say 200, it changed the width, what I was manually changing, and it also changed the corresponding height. The same ratio from the original, all right, that, that we had selected before we clicked that. So if you have that unchecked like that, then you can resize each one manually without the other one being affected, like so. So now it's 400 by 400, so the width equals the height. So if I click it and now go to 500, it will make the other one go 500 because the width equals the height. So if I uncheck that and do say 250, now the height is half of the width. Now if I check it again and do say, I'll double the width to 1000. Whoops, let me select it here. Okay, 1000, oh, gotta make this checked okay a thousand and then it doubles both of them so it's still one to two ratio there a thousand and five hundred 
All right. Uh, there's a couple options over here. If you click this, you'll see there's combine shapes, there's subtract front shape, intersect shape areas, exclude overlapping shapes. So if you're familiar with Adobe Illustrator's Pathfinder panel, this is these are not all those options from that, but these are some of the ones that you would find in there. So if I have combine shapes selected and I click and drag another rectangle, whoops. It combines it, all right? You'll see now it's just combining, it's adding to that same shape. And you'll see over here, it's not creating a new shape layer every time, it's just creating another area, and you still see where those original shapes are. And you can use the path selection tool. If you click it here and drag, you can move those around, those specific shapes. So it's not really combining them and locking them in like that, they're still editable and movable. You can also do the direct selection tool and you could say click on just one corner and move it and it'll say you know you need to turn this live shape into a regular path, continue, hit yes, and then it's more like a path. All right. So that's how the shape tool works with the path selection tool and the direct selection tool. Uh, if you go up there, there's subtract from shape. What that does is if you just click and drag, it's going to subtract from wherever they overlap. All right, all those shapes on the same uh, layer. If you do intersect shapes, then it's only going to show up wherever those sh uh, shapes intersect. So if I click and drag here, it'll get smaller and smaller because where all those shapes on the same shape layer intersect, that's the only one that's going to show. I'll show it to me and I'll just do a new layer, click and drag, and I'll set this to, okay, intersect shapes, click and drag. Now you'll notice only this area is showing up. That's because that's the only area where those two are overlapping. So if I use the path selection tool and move it around, it will affect the area where they're overlapping. Uh, the fourth one on there, exclude overlapping shapes. Now this is still selected, so if I do exclude, then it excludes wherever they're overlapping, and the rest shows through. All right, uh, over here where you have some of these are grayed out, uh, you need a couple ones selected in the same layer to use this. So if I held shift and clicked on this one, now I have two selected. And now you can actually align these to the left edge of both of them, horizontal centers, so they're both centered, right edge, top edge, you know, and so on. Uh, down here where it says align to selection, what that means is if you have both selected, they're going to just align over to the most left-hand side of both the shapes. If I do align to canvas, now when I go to, say, top edges, now it's going to go all the way to the top of the canvas. All right, that's what that does. And if you click over here, um, let me see here, I'm going to deselect, just click off somewhere and click one of these. Uh, if you click here, now you'll see bring to front, bring to back. You're probably used to these in more like an InDesign and Illustrator, but these are two different shapes on the same layer. And you can use this, you know, to bring one to the front, bring one to the back. This is if you had something like subtract the front shape. So if you wanted one shape on the front that would be subtracting from the others, then you would want to select it and bring shape to the front. Not just one level, but all the way to the front. Now it doesn't matter if you do all the way to the back or all the way to the front, if your shape layer is on the layer above everything else, it's only going to affect the shapes in that layer. It's going to be still be above the content in all the other layers over on the layers panel. And so that's the, the basics of the shape tool as far as the rectangle goes. Of course, if you want to do a, let's say, new layer and you want to do a square instead of a, a rectangle, you can hold shift on the keyboard and click and drag and it will constrain it. Uh, also if you hold shift it's going to toggle it to do combined shapes. You can also press the plus on the keyboard and that will actually toggle it. You don't have to hold on to it. You can press the minus on the keyboard that will toggle it to the same thing as if we clicked subtract front shape. So those are little shortcuts. You can hold shift or you can hold down uh, let me just do the so the default's new layer. If you hold down Alt on the PC or Option on the Mac, that will toggle it to subtract from. 
And if you let go, it will go back to the default of new layer. So there's some shortcuts uh, to be familiar with. If you also go to path, uh, those are just creating paths and you won't see them on the layers panel. You'll have to go over to the paths panel and then it'll show up there. And from there you can you know, make a selection, make a shape out of it. And you have some of the other options, kind of like if you were drawing a shape with the pen tool, all right? And the last one, pixels, is let's say I'm on the layers panel, let's say I'm on the background layer, and I'm gonna draw a rounded rectangle out, click and drag. Now it makes a pixel, all right? And I have a different mode here. If you do normal, then it's just gonna be like a normal. But if you do, you know, all these layer blending modes over here will affect the end result. But it actually removes, it doesn't remove, it replaces those pixels on our background layer that we're on. So you do need to be careful to create a new layer, then draw, then you can move it around on its own layer. It will not create a new shape layer like if you have shape uh, selected up there. Alright, so if you have pixels lit up there selected, make sure to create a new layer first if you want more uh, customizability, moving that around by itself. If you have shape layer, you don't have to worry about that. If you have it set here to new layer, then you can just click and drag and it will create a new layer on its own. Now while we're on the rounded rectangle tool, uh, you'll notice up at the top it has radius. So I can change that to say 20, click and drag, all right? And it makes the edges a little bit more rounded, all right? So if I make it say, I'll do 50, so it's a lot more and click and drag, you'll see this rounded rectangle here, I'm going to move it over here. You'll see this rounded corner, is it's wider from the two anchor points compared to this one over here. So you can select that with the path selection tool and you have some options up here uh, to adjust those. You can also go to direct selection tool and if you just click and drag you can move these. Again it's going to tell you to turn it into a regular path. Uh, it's like a shape with the path edges and that's just another option too. You can also, let me go to ellipse tool. If you click and drag and hold shift, that will create a perfect circle. It works just like all the other ones I've been going over, like the rectangle, the rounded rectangle. Uh, and you can click down here with all these and do, you know, if you want a fixed size to work with or proportional, you know, one to two or two to five or whatever. You can also go from center or when you're dragging, clicking it. If you click and drag, it always goes from the side, you see. If you hold down alt, then it will come from the middle. All right, it will draw from the middle wherever you're clicking and dragging. If you don't, it will just come from the side. So if you can find the center of a of some kind of shape, you know, and just draw from the middle. All you got to do is hold Alt on the PC or Option on the Mac. Uh, you can also go to Polygon tool. On there, you've got sides five, so you can do say three. All right, still have those because I drew those on the actual background layer. Uh, I'll choose a different color here. Let's go with. All right. So click and drag. If you hold shift, it will be at those specific angles. All right. Uh, so if you want something, for example, let me do a rectangle tool. If you click and drag and hold shift, that just creates a perfect square. But if I rotate it, say I've got the move tool and I got show transform controls up at the top selected and I'm rotating it and I hold shift, it will go at specific intervals. So if you want it perfectly level, then hold that shift. If you're rotating it, it's just barely off. And the line tool is pretty straightforward. If you just click and drag it and you can hold shift if you want a you know, 90 degree angle, 45 degree inter intervals. All right. And you can adjust the weight, you can adjust uh, size over here of the stroke and some of the other things same kind of idea you can create a new layer with shape you can subtract from and so on uh, the final one on the shapes panel there's a custom shape tool this one's pretty cool uh, if you click up here you should have a couple that show uh, if you click this side little gear icon and go to all and just hit OK then you can really uh, use some of these custom shapes, have a, have a large number of them. If you click in there, you can also load shapes if you download some. But uh, So there's some pre custom pre-made shapes in there. And if you click and drag it, this is creating a new shape layer, just like 
some of the other more basic shapes. So you can go back in here with the direct selection tool and you can adjust it and so on. You can also copy this and paste it into Illustrator and use it as vector uh, path as well. So that's pretty cool. And one more thing I want to go over, the rounded rectangle tool, one more option. Uh, if you click and drag it and you look over in the properties panel, I was talking about how a lot of the options are up here. They're also in the properties panel. But actually on the rounded rectangle tool, you can customize not just all four corners at once, like we can when we're just drawing it out. You know, just like all the, the shape tools, if you just click and let go, you can create, you know, a new shape that's a specific width and height without having to click and drag. From there you can adjust the the radii or the the multiple radius, which is radii, I guess because it's Latinate, uh, right there. Or over here in the properties panel, you can click and drag, let's say, and make this one a hundred and uncheck this ch chain so they're not they're not all constrained together. And I'm just gonna do these three different kinds. Alright. And then there we go, we got uh, one that's 200. You'll see it's a lot larger rounded side. So this would be helpful if you're creating logos. Usually you're creating logos in Illustrator. Uh, but if you're creating something quickly that's just going to be rasterized to put on a website pretty quick and you just want to create it in Photoshop, then this would be helpful with a rounded rectangle or when you're creating a menu or a brochure. Um, or some kind of graphic on a web ad that can be helpful as well. So that's the basics of the shape tool in Photoshop. Mm -hmm.